Good evening. Good evening, and thank you for attending our annual parent involvement night. Blogs, chat rooms, texting, Facebook, Twitter, these are all too familiar terms now, but hearing them over and over again doesn't make them any more understandable, especially if you were raised without the dependence of this technology that our children face today. A PC and a laptop computer have become household objects like a microwave oven and a fridge. We buy it for our children, but there's still a lot we don't know about them. With this new digital playground, our children have access to in-depth knowledge, tools to express their creativity and connect to people. It has drastically changed the way that children interact with the world and each other. Yet along with offering a fascinating new way to connect, the internet can also be dangerous and has become a shangri la for criminals. It offers new risks that include cyberbullying, exposure to inappropriate material, online predators, and often revealing too much personal information that can open unwanted doors. Studies have shown that over 2.5 billion people are connected to the internet. Facebook alone reported that they had 1.06 billion users as of December 31st, 2012. Who are your children friending on Facebook? What are they really texting to their classmates? How much online time is too much? According to research, the place where kids often most access the internet is right in their own home. Although the majority of children spend less than three hours a day online, 37% of those surveyed admitted to spending more than five hours a day online chatting. Too often, parents who are misinformed about the social web will shut their kids out of it completely, only to discover that they are finding other ways to log on. In this day and age, as parents, we need to take an active role in our child's online, online life to ensure they are on the path towards digital citizenship and protected from inappropriate content and people. We wouldn't let them cross a busy intersection alone, so why would we let them navigate the internet without making sure they fully understand the consequences of certain online actions. There are far many dangers lurking around online ready to take advantage of their innocence. For our children, the cyber world can no longer be dismissed as a time waster or a distraction. The networks our kids use to rate their friends and comment off photos will eventually become their core business tools and career prerequisites. Those who don't learn to use them responsibly will face a severe disadvantage. Let's face it. The powerful web world isn't going away anytime soon. So who would you rather help them navigate through it? Their cyber friends or us, their parents? So how do you achieve the balance between giving our kids the freedom to explore the internet while still keeping an eye on their safety? Start by educating yourself and them. The purpose of this evening is to offer both parents and students tips on how to stay safe. And we have brought in the experts to help us with that. PC Social, Scott Mail, Social Media Officer at Toronto Police Service, will be presenting social media for success and safety to the parents. He will be talking to us about various topics, such as finding the person with an issue in social media and doing an intervention before the issue becomes more serious. He will give us some guidelines with tips on what to look out for so we can identify if our child has been cyberbullied or is the one cyberbullying another child. He will also show us how the Toronto Police communicates using social media in an emergency, providing us with a positive perspective on how this powerful tool may also help us as a society. We also have here PC Terry Ann and PC Megan Nagari from 13 Division who will now introduce themselves. Thank you. I'm your cover Nomi as Officer Terry. I um, am the officer that comes into the elementary schools. So I have about 40 schools within our division, keeps me super busy. And I, you're so not taking my picture. <laughs> this is great. I said to him, don't take my picture. I don't want to be on the camera. It's all part of the uh, oh. talk here. <laughs> um, so I take me right up to grade eight. So I will come in and give different safety presentations, bullying, 
a little bit of cyberbullying, internet safety, maybe not to the extent that you do, but we dabble in it a little bit. I'm also the officer that helps with um, any, any issues that might be coming up within the elementary schools. So if there's some bullying going on, I'll go in and do some mediation, or if there is um, maybe something traumatic happens to somebody at home, they're having trouble, uh, gangs, those types of things, we go in and we help the schools with those. Um, I think that the, the important thing, people are shocked to know that we actually really want these jobs. Some people think that we get thrown into the schools and we have to do a couple years. We actually beg for these jobs and we do everything within our power to hang on to them. Our jobs are dangled in front of us every day. Taking the officers out of the schools, right? Cutbacks, teachers, you guys experience them, um, all workplace experience them, and policing's no different. So hopefully we will keep these positions because it's um, it's amazing to come in and work with the kids. These guys all know me as Officer Terry. Work with them um, and then to associate a police officer as a place of safety as opposed to that officer that showed up at a 911 call or they saw during a scary crime or their parents got a ticket and swore about that officer the whole way home. It's really nice for them to see us in that capacity. And um, first and foremost, I absolutely love my job and I hope to keep it as long as I possibly can. My partner is Megan McGarry and she works with the big kids. So I draw the line, if you're taller than me, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you move up to Megan. Yeah. And that's when she calls me, even if it's a grade eight student, she goes, I got a kid who's that's too it. tall, I need to come in. So I'll be like, okay, I'll be right there, I just gotta put my lifts and my shoes, that's it. We actually have uh, several high schools and there's actually two other officers that we work with as well in the school resource office category. We work in the community response unit and that's Officer Julianne and Officer Michelle. My primary school is Dante Alighieri, which is up at Dufferin and Lawrence, which is uh, on Playfair. And not to repeat exactly what Terry says, but for me as a police officer who's been working uh, a couple of years, more than a couple, I, I know you can't tell because of my oil of the land, and I look so young, and you're like, you must have just left high school. It's, I know, it's hard, it's hard to say. Plus, I'm not on camera, so I can say that. That's my reason for it, Scott, just so you know. <laughs> That's why I backed it up. I don't know if you guys caught that. The, the reality of what I love about this position is being proactive as opposed to reactive. When I worked in the primary response unit, which is the cars when you call 911 or the youth bureau, is we already knew the call and then we had to deal with it. But with this position though too, we can actually, we're not have a crystal ball in front of us, but we can actually perceive something that may take place and try and prevent it. And then we can deal with the situation before it actually happens in majority of the time. That's where policing I find today is going and I think that is the best route for all of us as a community within the school and in the city of Toronto is best for everybody. And even at the high school level we still have that bridge to gap between you know you guys you know you people teenagers adults you all the children up front here some people see this uniform and they already assume that I'm tough, right? Do I look that tough? You're looking at me, I, you think I'm tough? <laughs> is she tough? Head, if she could approve it, this would be pink. Yes. <laughs> so, and my hat would be a tiara with my badge in the It's bra. true, and she actually <laughs> has that uniform. We're not all that stereotype. Some of us get into policing because so we really, truly do want to help people. So. And we asked for capes because sometimes we think we're superheroes. Still budget, so we're hoping. Fingers crossed. But you guys all sign. A little, <laughs> a little petition we have out front. The reality is, this is our uniform for various reasons. One, yeah, wishing I wish you had some video. I know. Oh, that's so sweet. I have to edit this. This is a live feed, so we're done. Chief Blair, I, have, I think you're amazing right now. The reality is, is our uniform is for so many different reasons. But a lot of people, much like some of us have experienced, already make a judgment on what we're wearing. And that's one reason why sometimes in the schools, it's good for us to be in our uniform because they can realize that we are just like everybody else, except if you had a really cool cape. But we are human. We make mistakes. 
we can give you ex life experience that we've even had in the schools. And <laughs> Officer Terry, no, not yet. But this is where we as school resor resource officers help out in the community. And I think for a lot of parents, sometimes they perceive us as, oh, that school must be bad because they have a cop in it. That's not the case whatsoever. The reality is we try and assist and keep people on the right track right from the get-go. Because we all have been to school before elementary and high school and with social media now too, there's a whole other element out there that we need to be aware of. And this is where we, along with Scott, can bridge that gap. And also be able to explain what we do as police officers. We're also there to assist, not just when something went wrong, right? Is this where we should open up for questions? This looks like a serious I don't know. crowd. Do parents have any questions of us? Any, no? What our roles are? I think majority here because you have such an incredible principal too. Kudos to you, uh, Mr. Bonnet. But it, it's true. Thank, thank you. And I was going to say, parents, you have no idea what Officer Terry has done in our schools this year and last year. It's just so wonderful. The kids and the teachers have loved the, the conversation. It is uh, it's so uh, well grounded and connected and real for the kids. And that's what they really, plus the humor. But then, you're, then you also are really serious about what they shouldn't be doing. And they come back and they say, do you know what Officer Terry told us? We shouldn't have these accounts. And we are too young to be on, on the internet. And we're not being supervised. Or we should be supervised more closely. And what, I think one of the things that you've established is that some parents have the computers in the family room or the living room. So the kids can never go to their bedrooms and do things. They, they are doing it right in front of mom and dad. And the whole family gets to walk by a computer to see, what are my kids doing? But uh, this is the scariest world. Susie said it so well in her presentation. I think we need to put that in the, the next uh, newsletter. If you don't mind, you might just want to uh, just send that because that is information everybody should read in our school. Anyway, I won't say any more except that, yes, uh, thanks. We've got a lot of good people trying to say to the kids, Please make good choices. And parents, watch your kids. They're so young and they're using technology that they don't even understand the power of. Now we, even as police, are learning every day about this. This is why it's such a good thing to have an officer like Scott Miller because if we don't know, we go to who can ask. Because each and every day, even in the schools alone, we're getting these questions and, and a website being about this stuff that I have no idea. Right, so just being on top of it and being proactive, that's literally half the battle of being safe and keeping your children safe and also reminding those individuals out there who may be of a not a great nature, remind them that we are as a community aware of what may happen. So we'll try and put a firewall up as a community. So that's your best look. Oh, did you touch down? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. And thank you for your kind words too. That was very nice. Oh, you're, you're more than welcome. Ready? Can you hear me now? You? Okay. Um, I'm coming on camera. I'm Scott Mills. Uh, I'm a police officer, uh, just like uh, Officer Terry and Officer Megan. I didn't wear my uniform tonight, um, partly for, for, for one reason for education, another reason for convenience, because <laughs> I'm on parental leave right now, so I came from home. <laughs> um, but uh, Susie asked me to come here and do this, and I felt that it was a very, very important topic. Um, I do have a lot of social media knowledge. I've got, I used to do the job that, that these officers did. Uh, and lots of other different jobs. I've been a police officer for 23 years and, and Peel Regional Police for 12 and uh, the rest of them down here in Toronto and I was a 14 division guy for a long time. Um, and uh, so uh, what we're going to do tonight is just have some fun. And uh, you've seen me kind of uh, being right beside the officers off of the camera here and, and that's because um, the officers didn't really want to be on ca camera. They, were, they weren't comfortable with it. And, and you saw the reaction of Officer Megan when I took her picture. Um, I, I got a, a Samsung Galaxy 2 Android phone right here. 
And uh, I'm using Google Plus to, to stream this live to YouTube. So we're live to YouTube right now. So the, uh, the audio of what was said here today by, by the principal and the two officers, it's out there. And it's not coming off. Um, the, the, the pictures... <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the pictures. That's right. You you told the chief you wanted a pink uniform, and now you're on YouTube saying that. It's awesome. So I, I took some pictures and I created an event on Google Plus uh, just before here, and it's called the Parent Engagement Night at Darcy McGee School. And as I take pictures. I can actually ingest them and upload them directly into that event right to Google. So some of the pictures that, that have been taken tonight are, all, are, are already up there. And when, when Officer Megan said, don't take my picture, and she started running away from me right here, I said, that's a perfect segue into what we want to talk about here. Right? Did I put Officer uh, Megan's picture on? I did it. Did I, did I actually sc scroll over and take a picture of Susie and put it on? Yep. I sat there and I uploaded her right to Google, Susie. Right? Now, I got a relationship with Susie. We know each other uh, fairly well. And I know that she's kind of OK with, with her image being out there. And so I felt comfortable doing that to her. Um, but I, why I wanted to do that was I wanted to do a little demonstration. And I'm going to minimize it because we've got a PowerPoint here. And by the way, for those watching out on YouTube world, uh, there's about 50 people in the room here. I counted them, so congratulations. That's a great turnout. And I think about half are kids, right? Half are kids and half are parents. And uh, we're in a grade school here in uh, Toronto, Canada, uh, right in the heart of, of Toronto. It, it can't get any more Toronto than this. And so uh, th th thanks very much for, uh, for being here. So... Um, Essentially, what I did was I started, uh, this is the Google Plus event for tonight, and I just started it as, as, I, as I walked in. And um, I took a picture of your school sign out there, and I actually brought a friend of mine tonight. She's at the back. Her name's Nadia. Say hi to Nadia. N Nadia has a, a Samsung uh, tablet in her hand. And uh, she's, she's recently uh, acquired it, and she's trying to learn how to use it. She's actually on the Hangout with us. So if she wasn't in the room right now, and she was in her home and I was in another city, we could be having this conversation right here. And uh, if I just bring this up quick, you'll see that Nadia's kind of right there, and if she were to bring their, her... her, her uh, camera up, you'd be able to see her face, but she might be being a little camera shy like Officer Megan right now. <laughs> and, uh, and the good thing about it is Natty and I met on Twitter. Now, it doesn't matter how we met or why we met, we met. And I, all I'll tell you is that it wasn't on good terms. I was a cop, she was Nadia, as a community member, total stranger to me, and it wasn't on good terms. But now, we're on good terms. And the reason why we're practicing right now is in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be on Aquasosny um, uh, by Cornwall, talking to kids and parents just like this. And uh, Nata, uh, Nadia is from the na our Native community. She's going to come with me. She's going to be in Toronto, and she's going to be on here like this, and she's going to be talking, showing how cops and, and community work together. And, and that, that's a process by what I call, they call it social alchemy. It means something bad happened. Well, it happened in real life, and it happened on social media. But because we got relationships and we tried to work it out and things like that, we're doing something positive and good now. Really cool. So you can use technology. Why, why I, I, uh, I told Susie to call this night Social Media for Success and Safety, I want you to know those success stories. That's success. Um, you know... The, the astronaut, Commander Hadfield, um, Canadian, just came back from space. He went from about 300,000 Twitter followers to a million during the time he dropped from space to Earth. He gained like 700,000 Twitter followers, and his kids were running his Twitter account. I'm like, is this guy tweeting from inside that space capsule thing? You're like, hey, what's the deal? He's tweeting. And then all of a sudden, a tweet popped up and said, uh, just so you know, for context, 
Um, Commander Hatfield's son is doing the tweeting right now, right? So context is everything. And you can get every program you want on the computer and every app you want, but unless you've got a human being that can actually say, hi, how are you? <laughs> you can't understand truly the context of a human interaction. So we're having a human interaction right here. Um, I've invited the public to come so anybody can jump on. We got one person viewing right now. Um, I don't know who it is. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not, uh, I never really tried to market this, but afterwards I'm going to market it. And I'm hoping everybody here knows it's on YouTube and something cool happens here tonight and you guys want to market it too. So is that okay? You guys can share it. And if there's some, some people here that you said, wow, I didn't know that and I want to learn, that's what we're here to do. Because we're talking about success, but we're also talking about safety. Now, I don't know if Nadia, Nadia, do you want to say anything? Do you want to say anything? Oh, I've got you muted. I'm going to unmute you. Oh, I just unmuted you. All right, you're unmuted. I don't know. We're having technical difficulties here. She's right in the room. We're learning it. She's got to unmute herself. Can you unmute yourself? Just let me do this for one quick sec because I want Natty to be able to get a little voice on here. And then Natty is going to actually drop out of the Hangout and join the group. Okay? So this is part of our little training. And right here, uh, right there. There, here, talk, Natty. Hi. So what am I talking about? Now do you just say hi and uh, say whatever hi. you want because you're you're talking to YouTube now. Scott is the best guy for any technology related issues. <laughs> so you know, I have everything. I always do. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Nadia. Now what I could have done here was I could have taken that webcam and turned it around and every single person here, because Natty was sitting at the back of the room, would have went to YouTube with their face. Would that be a, an appropriate and smart thing for me to do? How many people say no? How many people say yes? I got a fan club. Look at that. <laughs> That's right. So we've had two examples right here live of the biggest lesson that we can learn tonight which is what? It's got to do with privacy, but it's, got, it's more than privacy. It's, it's talking to somebody and asking their permission, right? Consent, asking their permission. Are you comfortable if I turn this thing around and everybody's face on there? Are you comfortable if I go like this and snap a picture of everybody's face and post it on Instagram? Facebook, Google Plus, all at one time. No, we're not, right? So, so when I was over there and I was taking the picture of Officer McGarry, I was trying to get the reaction of her because I, I, I work with a lot of cops and I know a lot of cops are camera shy. And, 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 I, and I know that she didn't want that, but I was trying to get a reaction of her and I didn't post the picture. I didn't post the picture. But the, as we... Um, because I wanted to show you that it's real life. And there you go. That's on the internet right now. And that was when I was standing right there. Okay? Now, I did do one picture here that I didn't ask permission for. And it was of kids facing with their back with Natty in the back because I wanted to make a point. So if you're in this next picture that you're about to see, and you don't want to be on the internet, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that picture off. Okay? So <laughs> See? Nadia didn't know I was there. <laughs> so what I'll do, what I'll do, I got one person being Nadia saying, you're in trouble. She didn't like the picture, so I'll take it off, right? Now what I'm trying to show you guys, and especially the parents and especially the school people, is this is going on in your school. This is going on on the way to school and on the way home from school. It's going on in our bedrooms, and it's going on in our living rooms, and it's going on everywhere. 
Now here, so, so consent, ask people before you do something, right? The other thing is, um, the other, now, now that, when I just scrolled it up, it's live on YouTube, right? But I was careful when I took it that the people were looking that way, and I was careful it was far away and stuff, but with facial recognition and stuff like that, you'd never be able to find that really on that YouTube video probably, and, 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 and actually put it to a person Unless when I put the tags in the video, searchable items, that, searchable actually items that actually included somebody's name, then you're going to go. But if I were to go like this from here and take a picture of all your faces and put it on the internet, would facial, and I put it on Google Plus or, or Facebook or something like that, would facial recognition auto, automatically, depending on how you had your privacy settings set, automatically say your face looks like that guy's face and put it together? Yeah. Yeah. How do you think a lot of the people at the Stanley Cup riots and the G20 got identified for, for doing vandalism and stuff like that? It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. And, you know, it does it. If you've got an Apple computer and you, you upload pictures up to um, iPhoto, as soon as you get all those photos in there on your own computer, it's not a public database, it's on your own computer, it starts sourcing them to, oh, is that Uncle Sandy? Is that... Uh, you know, is that Susie? Is that Officer Megan and stuff like that? Next thing you're, you're associated. So for somebody in the public view, like Officer Megan, Officer Terry, and myself, it's really hard to get away from that, right? Because we're out in the public, we're public figures and stuff like that. And if people, um, I'm good, thanks. I got one up here. Thanks, Terry. Um, if people are, um, if, if people are taking our picture, it can go up there for whatever reason, no matter what we're doing. And it could be, as, as, as for us as officers, when we're walking in our personal life, uh, it can be when we're in our professional life, it doesn't matter. What if the officers go to a wedding? What's, what do people do at the wedding? Everybody's taking your pictures, right? At, at my wedding, uh, not too long ago, uh, the, the photographer, and, and it was done with, with my, my wife's and my consent, the photographer had a blog up and rolling before the wedding was over. Right? right. So if you're so, in the wedding party, and, and the bride and groom have consented to that with their, with 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 their photographer, and and you don't know, and next thing you know, you're you're all out on the internet, right? So I guess does that really make you think? I'd say undercover policing is the way we know it is probably over. <laughs> it's probably over, and and. and I recognize that as a 23-year veteran police officer, but not all police officers see it that way. And, and so we have to ask. We have to ask people. We have to educate and learn things. So that's what we're here to do tonight, to learn. And one of the key things I want you guys to learn uh, is something uh, really near and dear to what we do, um, Officer Megan and Officer Terry and myself. If something is to go wrong at your school and you go into what's called hold and secure and lockdown, first off, I don't want you to be scared because you got some really great professionals that are here looking after you. Okay, you guys good with that? Nothing to be scared of. If you hear the words hold and secure, it comes over the, 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 uh, the PA system, what's that mean? It means stay in the school. Something, something could be happening outside, you know, something's going on, and, and we want the kids, the, until the incident's done, for safety reasons, we want the kids to stay inside. Should you be scared? No? Alert, eyes and ears. <laughs> Listen to what your teachers are saying, the direction from your principal, the direction from the officers, and things like that. Don't be scared. Got it under control. We're just being safe, okay? If, you, if it comes up and it says you're in lockdown, what's that mean? It means you can't come in and out of the school probably something going on inside the school or immediately outside the school and you're on lockdown. So, should you be scared? Well, if some guy's running around with a gun, you're going to be scared. <laughs> Let's be honest here. So am I. So is Officer Megan. So is Officer Terry. But the bottom line is you got you to gotta think and you got to listen to what your teachers and your principal are saying, right? So they're trained to, to, do, to, to basically tell you what to do. And all we want you to do is listen and keep in mind that, that we're, we're there working. We're working on whatever it is to get the place safe for whatever it is and whatever 
for whatever it is, but I don't want you to panic. Is that okay, kids? Don't okay. panic, think, be alert, and listen, okay? And take direction from the people in charge. Now, what are the people in charge doing? Let's say, let's say there's a person with a gun right outside the school. Principal sees it. Oh, my God, there's a guy outside our school with a gun. I don't know if he's coming in. I don't know where he is. I've lost sight of him. I'm on the phone in 911. School's going into lockdown, okay? The officers are coming, and they're coming en masse, and they're coming fast. They're going to try and find this person. What am I doing or my team in Toronto Police Corporate Communications are doing is we're trying to figure out what's going on. The way that you guys are trying to figure out what's going on. As soon as we can establish contact with the sergeant in charge of the scene, we are going to try... Um, I hope my internet connection is still going good. I'm trying to get to... Uh, trying to get to the Toronto Police website. Yeah, I think we're coming up. We're going to try and get timely information out so that we reduce the panic level and we inform the public what's going on. And the public means you guys. It also means the other officers. I don't know why I'm losing my internet connection here, but what I'm trying to bring up and show you is the Toronto Police website here. There, perfect. On the Toronto Police website, how would you find anybody at the Toronto Police website? Google Toronto Police. Easy, right? Usually when you want to find something, you just go to Google. Google it. Go to the Toronto Police website. These are stories of things that we do. This is how you get in contact with us, the different units and stuff. Over on this right-hand side, there's what's called a social stream. And this is what my job is. When we upload a YouTube video, uh, it, it, it goes right, right there. So it goes to YouTube, but it goes right to the front page of our, of our uh, website. So chances are there was a homicide not too long ago, not far from here, and uh, the homicide inspector was over there updating the media. I was broadcasting with this computer, the same setup as I am right now on the road. So I was, just, I was putting it, but I was on the Toronto Police uh, account, and it was going right there. So if we're able to do stuff like that, we will. If the people that know how to do it are available, we're going to try and do that. What you're more likely to get for timely and effective updates is a social stream right here. So what I could do is I could actually... Tweet something right now from here. Go on Twitter on this phone or the Blackberry that I have from Toronto Police, and I can actually say what I'm doing and where I'm at. So I'm just going to go uh, right now. I took a few pictures tonight that I'm allowed to post. Um, can I post a really good picture of you that you knew I took? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm just gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say thank you, Nadia, for making our community a safer place tonight at. Darcy, Darcy. MCG School H Parent Night. And I'm going to put Susie Batista on it. So I tagged her. I'm going to be on Twitter right now. And I just put tweet. So I just sent that tweet with a picture of Nadia, and it's going up right now. And as soon as that gets through the phone and posts, if I refresh the page, it's going to come right through this uh, Twitter feed here as Graffiti BMX Cop. Because I'm not on the Toronto Police account right now. I'm kind of as an individual officer right now, but it's a full approved Toronto Police account. Um, so all the rules as a police officer apply in social media. So right there, thank you, Nadia, for making our community a safer place tonight at Darcy McGee thank School you, Parent Night, and I tagged Susie Batista. And right on the front page of the Toronto Police website, 
is a picture of Nadia. <laughs> you are <f> <laughs> The things you make me do. The yeah, that's right. Maddie is an amazing human being. She puts up with all this nonsense. So that's, yeah, that's a little bit fun how we did that. If you're in an emergency situation, we are frantically trying via the police radios that these officers have. We'll be in touch with our communications bureau. More importantly, we wait in our corporate communications uh, office. Before we put something out, we try and verify with the scene sergeant, the person that's on scene that's in charge, that things are okay and what's going on. So as soon as we get that information, Officer McGarry tweets. Yes, do you, Terry? Okay, Officer McGarry tweets. You are Megan. Officer Megan. So Officer Megan probably doesn't have an issued smartphone. Chirp, chirp. Put a little bug in somebody's ear, right? These school cops need some smartphones. Uh, yeah. So, so now uh, the officers who are in charge and know what's going on here can actually do that, and it's like a, it's like a common hailing frequency. Because when we see that as a Toronto Police account on Twitter, um, if you go on to uh, Toronto Police, you'll see that Toronto followers and, and we can these. see what officer McGarry's saying and to 44,142 people we can just retweet it because we've got a trusted source that knows what's going on at the school and things are under control and that way you as the parents aren't saying oh my god I just saw in CP24 something's going on at Darcy McGee school and you start to think crazy and you get in your car and you drive crazy and next thing you know somebody's in a car accident there's no such thing as an accident. It's a collision. <laughs> my uh, my colleague Tim Burrows would be smacking me right now for saying that because yes, because there's no such thing as an accident because collisions are preventable. It's not an accident. So um, terminology is everything out here, and uh, context is everything. So you have to make sure that when we're posting officially that there's context. Is there an issue at times with um, uh, people that aren't really cops, like how do you know somebody on the social media beat is really a cop and not somebody that's pretending to be a cop, right? I I'm, think I'm probably a cop because they let me stand beside them and they got guns and uniforms on. Um, uh, but I do have my, uh, my wallet here somewhere and, and I could show you my badge just to make sure. And, and, and to be honest, I've seen you in uniform. There's my badge. It's the same as these officers. But can here's, here's point number three of tonight. Can you do this well on the internet? Really kind of hard to do, right? And in order for it to work, you got to have that warrant and authority card. you got to have the picture, and that's what it looks like. So I trust you guys. If you guys want to take a look at that, pass it around. Just don't steal the money. You know? No, there's not much in it there. We don't get reclassified anymore. So, <laughs> um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the bottom line, though, is that if you need to verify where it says connect with us here uh, on the Twitter, on the, on the social stream there, you can click on that, and you can actually go to a page where all the officers that are, that are officially using social media uh, for Toronto Police uh, will be uh, listed there and you can see and verify who they are. Now they take training to do this um, and once they're there they are right there. So there's our social media people. Uh, you got our Deputy Chief, uh, Mark Saunders and Peter Slowly at the top, Divisional Policing. This is my team, the Corporate Communications team here. So this is the team in the office that are responsible for getting emergency messages out to the public in emergencies. And their duty desk, that's after hours. 11 division, 12 division, and there's your 13 division people, which is where we're at right now. So you got the community response clerk. So you got the you got Constable Deanna Cuto, Constable Ed Pangos, Constable Franco Zafino. 
Sergeant Linda Hilburn, I believe, is now working in the Tavis unit, so we need to update that. There's Constable Megan There's right Constable. there, Megan McGarry, and you can verify can that verify. she's real. Okay? okay? So that's social media for emergency management. We also have a lot of officers who use Facebook, and if you use Facebook as an officer, um, here in Toronto, we're allowed to become friends with kids. We're allowed to become friends with the uh, parents, with community members, with people like Nadia. Anybody we want to be friends with, we can be friends with, uh, but we have to have a professional relationship out there. So Facebook friends. So I'm friends with people that are gangbangers. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. I talk with people in gangs, and believe me, sometimes they're telling me things that I don't really want to hear because something's going bad. And next thing you know, I'm able to get the information that they're telling me into the hands of somebody that can actually save somebody's life. And that's kind of neat. So um, I, I'm pretty passionate about that. When, when we post on Facebook, if we want to be posted into the loop, it comes uh, right out into here. It moves a little slower. I always say the news kind of breaks on Twitter and it falls on Facebook. And then there's Google Plus that we're on tonight. <laughs> okay, uh, Google Plus is it's just really cool. Um, it's it's neat. They got a lot of neat things going on out there. But Facebook and Twitter is kind of where a lot of people are at. If you look under here, right here, we're we're in a global world now. So kids, um, you know, like if you go on me for today, it says appeal to help Dutch police find missing children. And I'm actually working in social media tonight and today to find those two missing children that have been missing since uh, May the 6th in Holland. And I'm working with Holland police officers today from my kitchen table at my house, getting this official information out, and we're sending it around the world in social media with all the links on how you can get a hold of the police if you know anything, how you can anonymously submit tips to Crime Stoppers. So that all looks fun and well and good. Um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It takes, takes human resources. It takes knowledge. It takes know-how. But more, mostly, more, most importantly, it takes a community to trust us. You know, and, and so if there's 50 people sitting in the room here tonight, and this is all organized by Susie and the team here, and Joanne Dilio and great people. Yeah, give my hand. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so trust, trust is everything. And I'll tell you. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of walking around the room right now, isn't it? Yeah. So I'll tell <laughs> Megan, the reason why that wallet is so fat is not because I have a lot of money. It's because there's a whole bunch of spare batteries for my phones in there. Because <laughs> batteries are everything when there's an emergency. If, you, if your phone goes dead. Hi. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, on this blog, this is a reference for you as parents, when, when you go home tonight, I know it's 8.30, they said I could talk as long as I want. I don't know if you want to hear me talk as long as I want. No. We don't. It goes until 8.30, which is about 10 minutes from now. What I like to do after a presentation is I like to embed some reference material for everybody to go to that's got everything we talked about in one spot. Because this is a, something that you want to do with the kids. You want to sit down and just kind of talk with each other after. You guys cool with that? Talking with your parents? How many kids here have Facebook? Nobody's getting in trouble. I love Facebook. My kids have it too. One, two, three. Yeah. Oh, Megan put her hand up. <laughs> now, Officer Megan, you can, how many people are friends with Officer Megan on Facebook? Sir, how does it
Ah. Uh, I thought Yeah, I thought he was the under, undercover professional standards cop coming to watch me. I look at him and I'm like, "Who are you, buddy?" <laughs> no. So the bottom line though, is is this. Um, I did this one. This is in French. So if there's any French people here, I speak French. I wish I You speak French? Yeah. I love French. You guys are doing great. So I got, I do a lot of these in French. So this has actually got an uh, anti-intimidation atelier, a, to, a total presentation that was done up in French by uh, by the staff two nights ago up in Markham when I was talking up there. So I just put it on there, and there's there's the whole presentation we're doing tonight. Um, every one of my presentations is different, but they always come down to one thing, which we're going to get to. Um, yeah, so that's in French, and that's the video. So I'm going to do one of these for tonight, and uh, anything that you guys want to put on that, so it's in one link, uh, you can just go to successandsafety.com, and you guys will be able to get all everything, and, and and really take a look at it, because there's no way that I can explain to everybody here all the little intricacies of privacy settings and Facebook and all that type of stuff. You just you got to sit down and play with it, and. Uh, so as you scroll down in this one, um, this, this is my presentation officially approved. It wasn't officially approved for a long time. For about, I'd say, eight, nine years, I've been just saying over and over and over and over and over again, we've got to be friends with the kids. We've got to be out there with the kids. We, because, because I was working in 14 Division, and, and I had about 17 kids, one of them, one of them, the guy that was shot and killed at Yorkdale on, on Easter, he's one of them. All right? So we're talking pretty close to the neighborhood here, right? I know what I'm talking about. I had 14 to 25 kids that were terrorizing all the other kids in my schools. And I had nine downtown high schools, and so not too far from here. You know, Central Tech, Harvard, Central Commerce. Um, yeah, all great places, but when you got a group of about 25 kids that are intimidating all the other kids and they're doing it online and none of us are out there, guess what? Guess what? Our own kids that are good kids, which is the majority of kids, won't even answer the door to the cops when they go to visit unless you have some fancy knock. Even if you call saying you're going to come, you got to go knock on this window and that window and that window so they know it's not the bad guy coming again. I'm just telling you reality. The last time I, said, I, I, I talked in this room, I talked with uh, Sergeant Dougie Miner. Dougie Miner is uh, one of the foremost authorities on gangs and things like that. And I, he let me live stream him, which I never thought he ever would. I've been friends with Dougie for a long time. He laid it out there. That video is still on there. I'll put that video in there. Okay? You watch the video that Dougie Miner did. And, and, and watch, because it's got the overlay. It's a bit old, it's a bit outdated, but these things just don't go away. They don't just poof and say, go away. They're there. But we got a great community, and we need to work together. And, and that's, I'm telling you this because this is why I started doing this, and this is why I'm here tonight. I'm away from my family tonight, and it's because it's important. It's really important that we have this talk. It's important that you know you can go to us. And... As for the policy people in the room, this is all about social media and the law. It's a lawyer by the name of Eric Rohr. He's out of Toronto, board in Ladner, Gervais. Um, he is. He's your school board lawyer. He's an absolutely brilliant man. He believes in this whole concept, except he's not prepared to say that everybody, like every teacher and every guidance counselor and everybody can go out there and get a Facebook account and be friends with kids and stuff like that. He's all about purpose and process. We'll get the payoff and the potential. Thankfully, under the leadership of our Chief Blair and Deputy Chief Slowly especially, um, we've been able to adapt some of these policies that a bunch of us have been screaming about for about 10 years because of all the intimidation that was going on online and all the kids being scared because of a small group of kids that were doing this to other kids. And we're, we're there now. I'm telling you, we're there now. If they pull the, school, the, the, the cops out of the schools, it is the, the, the worst thing ever that could be done in this, in this neighborhood and in this city. 
absolutely worth saying. And I will stand on the hilltops and scream that for, for as, as far as I can, I can yell. Uh, because a lot of the kids, um, I, don't, I can't really talk for you, for you guys, but you guys will go to the cops and say, you know what, something's going down here. And the officer said himself, they can just be standing in the right spot at the right time and prevent a, a, a total disaster. Because, unfortunately, I'm the guy that goes with a homicide squad when we got to go talk to a whole school because some kid's dead at lunch because they got stabbed or they got shot. And there's nothing worse than standing in front of an entire school saying, can you give me tips on who shot Buddy? And then three years later, you got any tips about who shot Buddy? You know what? I'd much rather have Officer Megan... And, and, and Officer Terry in the school getting the word saying something's going to go down at lunch, you better go stand out front. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll eat my lunch out there. You know what? That, that works. It works. It takes away the opportunity and it saves kids' lives. And, 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 and we really need to do it. So the law, Eric has a beautiful presentation here. If you want to look at it for the law about how this can work going forward and what the actual law is. This is a document of Facebook privacy settings. How many kids here have Twitter? One, two. Yeah, the big kid at the back. Um, how many kids have Instagram? One, two, three, four. Anybody using, uh, what's your most favorite social media site? Twitter? Twitter? Anybody else? What's that? Ask FM? Who's on Ask FM? Ask FM's anonymous. Yeah, stand up, show your face, go somewhere and say you're you, right? The whole Ask us. Does anybody do Snapchat? You're on Snapchat. Do you think that when you do Snapchat, um, that that 10 second or whatever it is, quick video that goes up or quick picture goes up and it's gone, do you think it's still there? It's still, it's there. still there. It's still there. Anybody, Anybody can go on the anymore. internet because your friends got it, and you go on the internet, you just sign up. And and what the what kids do is they you're supposed to be 13 to have Facebook. How many? Nobody's getting in trouble. How many kids lied about their age? One, two, five. three, four, five, six. Oh, the big guy at the back. So pretty much. <laughs> I wish the camera was panned that way because this was like a sea of hands going up, including Officer Megan. No. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the, the reality of it is is that people lie about their age, and even though the terms you use say they're 13, kids that are like 8, 9 are on there. They're communicating there. Here's, here's the only solution in my mind. Talk with each other. Kids, let your moms and dads in. Let them in. They care. You know, don't say anything on the internet that you wouldn't want your mom to see because or your dad or anybody that's an adult in your world that you love more importantly don't put anything on the internet that's going to cause you grief the next day when you wake up okay because because we got we got young girls especially they're posting inappropriate pictures and the, and as time goes on they feel so bad about themselves they end up committing suicide and we don't want that all right the only way to prevent that kids don't put anything stupid. Don't be stupid. It's very simple. Don't be stupid. Ask permission. If it's dumb and somebody's going, that's dumb. <laughs> Ears, dumb, don't do it. Just when I was standing there, I was dying to tweet <laughs> Officer Terry. I'm like, I want to tweet her so bad right now. And, 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 but I'm not going to do that because you got to count. Think, right? Think, think, think. Verify what you're going to do twice and post once. Stop. Hold on to it. Right? Think. Think before you shoot. <laughs> think before you post. Now, kids, think about your jobs. Think about, I call myself a propeller head. Think about a bunch of guys that love gadgets and internet and stuff like that. Think of a propeller head like me being paid thousands of dollars to look at your internet past before you get a job. And there's like 100 people applying for the job. There's only one job you want really, really bad. And you said a bunch of stupid things when you're in grade 8 online. And one of the criteria of the jobs is 
we don't want anybody that's going to say anything stupid to that are that's going to de be detrimental to the reputation of our company. Well, guess what? One of those other 99 people are going to get that job because the propeller head's going to find it. They're going to tell the person making the hiring decisions, I found all this about this one, and they're going to hire somebody else. Are you ever going to know that, that that happened? You aren't even going to know what hit you, and you're like, I can't get a job anywhere. Well, guess, guess what? what? You probably posted stupid stuff online your whole life. So don't be stupid, because you won't be able to get the job of your dreams. Is this making sense for you guys? Yeah? You guys promise me not to be stupid? Yeah? Will you be Officer McGarry's friends? If you can be friends with Officer McGarry, I'd be happy. This little document here, which is going to be on yours, is a, it's a living, breathing document that explains in layman's terms how Facebook privacy settings works. But pr Facebook privacy settings are always changing and stuff like that. So every time myself or anybody that wants to be a contributor to this document that I know and trust and puts good information into it, they actually show you where to go to find how to change different settings and circle it. So that's going to be on your blog post when we're done. Okay? And, and we keep updating that thing all the time. But I, I'm going to leave you with this. Kids, if you need help, can you please go to somebody that can help you? If it could be one of your friends, right? Could be a parent. You guys do that for me? If you need help, go talk to somebody. Nothing's as bad. If you're feeling bad, your heart's heavy, go talk to your friend. If you got if you, once you talk to your friend, you gotta go talk to the teacher, go talk to the teacher. Just you know, if you gotta be in private, do it in private. If you gotta be anonymous and send a tip into Crime Stoppers because some dude that you, that lives down the road from you has got a gun and you're like, I want nothing to do with this, call Crime Stoppers. You're anonymous. The law protects your anonymity. Nobody knows who it is. Officers Terry and uh, Megan and, and the team, they all get the, the information. Next thing you know, they got the gun. Is that guy going to be able to shoot somebody if he doesn't have his gun? No. It's a safer place, right? So um, I, I, I'm going to go into this uh, presentation here just real quick for you. And uh, I'm going to skip through a lot. But uh, they call me a graffiti BMX cop. This, this is what I do. I love BMX stuff. We used to have one in the Phil Wright Arena. We had one at Wallace Emerson Community Center, that bike park. Unfortunately, Mike Hayden, our guy that runs everything, he just left Toronto and he started a school up in Thunder Bay. <laughs> so we lost our main man. So we're scrambling right now to keep those ramps going and stuff like that. We do graffiti art anywhere we can. And there's uh, one of my really cool kids, Jermaine. Sitting up on the graffiti at ramp, on, the, on the ramp on his BMX bike with a helmet, nice and safe, success and safety. And this is the Canadian beaver that one of the graffiti artists painted in the background. So I love that. All my contact is in here. I do a lot for Crime Stoppers throughout the whole world. I love Crime Stoppers because you can be anonymous and get information in that can save somebody's life. <laughs> it works. Um, these are all the little things that are kind of boring. I'll tell you, this This isn't boring. They used to have four cops. Okay, we're ready to go here. They used to have four cops that did the uh, Crime Stoppers uh, talks. And uh, it was really hard for them to get into school for some reason. Schools didn't want them in. They, they got rid of the officers. And then they brought back one. It happened to be me. I started using social media. Just power one, right? Post them as we go, doing cool things. And in a one year period, a two year period, our tips increased from 300 a month to 1,000 a month with one quarter of the staff. Pretty cool, eh? We're getting lots of stuff about everything from online bullying to potential terrorist attacks. Like, it's pretty, pretty crazy. Um, I want to show you. I want to leave you guys with this. If you want an example of actually managing that whole emergency management thing at a school, in there is yeah. when we did Central Tech where a shot was fired, and we were doing it right there. So there's a real good example of what it looks like and through that social feed if you want to take a look at it. I'll end with this story. It's going to take me two minutes to say it. The reason why we got to be out there with our kids. This is for the parents. Kids, look at it for what you want. This is a colleague of mine in Omaha, Nebraska. 
I'm heading down there not too, not too long. We're going to do some more training down there. Um, son of a police officer gets kicked out of school for something stupid, dumb. Little, not a big thing. Goes, goes home, gets his dad's uh, service revolver. Steals his dad's car. Comes back to the school. Shoots and kills the vice principal. Wounds, uh, wounds the principal. And he drives to a different area and kills himself. That's his picture. So that's a cop song. And, and it, this is pretty hardcore. I know there's kids here, but this has got to be said. Kids, if you see this, if you see on, on your Facebook where somebody's saying something bad, please go to a parent, to a teacher, to an uh, officer, uh, Terry, Officer McGarry, any officer, somebody. Maybe you guys become friends with me. I don't care. Go to somebody that can do something about it. If it's an emergency, call 911. If you saw this, you'd call 911 if it was one of your friends. He said, everybody that used to know me, I'm sorry, but Omaha changed me and screwed me up. The school I attended is even worse. You're going to hear about the evil I did. That school drove me to this. I want you guys to remember me for who I was before I greatly affected the lives of the families ruined. I'm sorry. Goodbye. That's real life, you guys. Real talk. We're real people. Cops are real people. That's the son of a cop, and he went and did something horrific. But before he did it, post it on his Facebook. If you guys see something like that coming in, can you do us a favor? If you got to call 911, call 911. If it's an emergency, call 416-808-2222 in Toronto. It's a non-emergency number. Those are the quickest ways to report. Officer McGarry, Officer it's really important, you guys. Officer McGarry and Officer Terry and myself and stuff like that, we have to sleep. So if that was an emergency and you sent a Facebook message to one of us and we're sleeping, that's not going to do any good, right? So if you see something like that, do something about it, okay? And I don't want you guys to leave scared. I think we got one of the we got the greatest city in the world as far as I'm concerned. We got our challenges just like everybody else, but we got a great city. You guys got a great school. It's a safe school. We aren't without our challenges. It's true. We're not. It doesn't matter where you go to school. We all have challenges. But if you talk about it and we get to do something together and we can help each other, it's a win-win, right? You guys happy with that? Nadia is at the box. She's going to... Uh, you still on the hangout, Nadia? I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna close this off for you guys. This is our hangout. So, looks like uh, we got one viewer still. So we didn't have a lot viewing. We got 50 people in the room. If you guys want to to share the video, uh, it'll be on Graffiti BMX Twitter. And uh, there we go. My wallet's coming back up here. Did you guys learn? How many people learned something? Yeah? None of the kids, you know, half the kids' hands up. All the parents' their hands are up. Yeah? I just want to thank all you people for coming here. 50 people in a room, like I said, is an amazing accomplishment. Thanks to Susie. Thanks to the officers. And, uh,